What is good everyone? Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my second reaction video episode. And before I get into it, I just want to give a big, big thank you to all of you who are watching my videos. I've seen a really good uptick in activity and a lot more people are watching my videos in the past couple of weeks and that's all thanks to you. Thank you for watching, thank you for hitting that like button and even sharing my videos. Okay. This reaction video is my second and I think it's going to be a lot better than the first one I made because in the process of making the first one I realized some things about editing and f actually filming to begin with that could be fixed and made better for the second episode and so this one should be a lot better. The reason I didn't go back and reshoot the first one and just kind of went with it is because well I want my reaction videos to be my first time viewing the video I didn't want it to turn into some kind of scripted thing by re-filming it and kind of reacting the same way. So when I do a reaction video, it's actually going to be the first time I've seen the video. Now today's video is also another gold standard Japan YouTuber. Actually, this is a Japanese YouTuber, Nobita from Japan. And again, the topic is English education. And the title of the video is Problems of English Education in Japan. And as an English educator who's taught in Japan for over 15 years at various levels and all of my degrees are in English and linguistics and education, I'm somewhat qualified to comment on this, I think. So without further ado, let's take a look. I see quite many foreigners complaining about this. Why do Japanese suck at English? Of course, you could say that's no surprise, because it's a completely foreign language here, and we don't really need that. Almost no program whatsoever, even if we don't speak any English in daily life. So maybe it's only natural. Most Japanese are not good at English. But on the other hand, you could also say that it's really weird. Most people learn English more than 10 years. There are tons of textbooks in every bookstore in every city, and a lot of private English schools or lessons available everywhere. And yet, Japan is quite behind from other Asian countries like South Korea or China, for example. So today, let's talk about why. Let me share some of the big problems about English education here, based on other people's experiences and my experience as well as a Japanese person grew up here. Let's start with textbooks. This conversation example is from a textbook that I actually used at my middle school. Probably any native English speakers find it really awkward. Even though grammatically, it's not incorrect. I'm sure they wouldn't actually speak like this. But that's the type of English we constantly get at school. So unpractical, unnatural, and quite often uncontextual as well. But of course, we don't notice it. We think that's a natural conversation native speakers actually speak. The reason why I keep seeing these problems is because these English books for English study are written and edited by Japanese authors. I've checked so many books and I, I asked my teachers, I said, do you realize that there are no native English speakers who have either written or edited these books? And they were okay with that. The textbooks are made based on the university entrance exam. That means if the exam is not globalized, that means textbook will be Japanized, nationalized. If you cannot change the exam, nothing will change. Yeah, the whole textbooks being made by Japanese people is pretty well known and honestly there's a lot of times when strange English will occur in conversation that I might be having with a Japanese person or a Japanese teacher will come up to me and say you know I learned this phrase when I was in high school and I've never actually heard it used ever and it turns out to be some kind of like anachronism it's a it's a leftover phrase or word that has been kind of recycled through Japanese education throughout the years, you know, the decades. So they were teaching this phrase back in the 50s and it's just continued on to be taught again and again over and over in Japanese education. Priorities. Take a great score at this test, you know, pass the test. So remember this, remember that. This is going to be on the test. 
yes, that makes sense. But at the same time, like it's so boring. It wasn't exciting at all. The focus of entrance exams with English is almost strictly grammar and vocabulary, which I understand. I mean, that makes sense uh, academically. But there's no real focus on context or real world use, and that's a big problem. I remember listening to my kids who were taking a listening test. They were playing English examples on the PA system. I, I had to try really hard not to laugh because the English made no sense. The context was completely wrong. The either the conversation flow didn't make any sense or it was really, really stifled. English needs to be more about practicality and less about about tests. Now to be fair, I would say textbooks the world over are a little bit not real context and you know they're they're a little bit forced and unnatural. And I remember taking French and there were always French terms and expressions that you know the first time I visited France I found out a couple of expressions were like really old fashioned and no one said them anymore. <laughs> or Japanese, for example, you spend a lot of time learning uh, more formal types of speech and especially like masiform of verbs and then you get here and you make some Japanese friends and no one uses it and I had actual, you know, the little Japanese I came with was kind of all that a little bit formal masiform verbs and when I got here and Japanese friends were talking to me, they're like, oh, don't, don't, don't say that. But I don't know how to use anything else. Like, I don't know how to use the informal verbs. And so I had to learn all of that. Which brings us to the next point. In the class, most focus is on grammar, reading, or listening. And we spend much less time for speaking or practical conversation practice. Not just because of the importance on entrance exams or paper tests, but also as a teacher, it can be really difficult to introduce it in Japan. English is, is very much a language where you are constantly expressing your own thoughts and opinions. That can get tricky. There's the pressure for kids to not mess up. The problem is that there's too much pressure on kids individually to always be right in the classroom. And nobody's gonna get this stuff the first time. With that, these kids are never going to develop any confidence in speaking up and saying just anything. A lot of students are so shy to speak English to each other. like. Yeah, let's practice the English conversation we just learned together. Like, you know, let's practice with someone sitting next to you. And when it happens, we very speak because like we are so embarrassed about speaking English. Even though like I wanted to like try speaking English, but I didn't want to embarrass myself. I don't know if it's only in Japan. I think more in Japan. Yeah, the mentality is when you try to raise a hand, when you try to be like Hermione, like Harry Potter, you kind of stand out in a bad way. But you are clearly good at English now. Yeah, the pressure to not make mistakes and the desire to not stand out anyway is definitely something that holds you back when you're learning a foreign language. So many of the students care and they're afraid to look foolish in front of their peers or in front of a teacher or make any kind of mistake. And of course, the problem is with language, you have to just use it and make those mistakes because it's a practice. I always tell my students that English is knowledge and skill. Like you can, you can have all this knowledge in the world from the textbook and the vocabulary lists and the grammar study that you've done, but so you have to practice it like any skill. And no skill, no human is perfect at all skills, so you're going to make mistakes. And if you avoid them, then you get situations where students don't speak or don't want to talk to each other. I feel like a Japanese class, regardless of the subject, it's always passive. In Japan, I feel like only the teacher speaks mm -hmm. and no one else. Passive. So there's not much like engagement in class. It's, it's just A equals B and that's it. That's, that's all they end it with. And so if you just continue that for high school and, and college as well, then you're not really knowing how to use that information. So many Japanese companies praise high TOEIC scores, which is a Japanese exam. And that is only used within Asian region. And only focus totally. on passive skills like um, listening and reading. So from my perspective, um, students would gain more benefits in studying towards a globally recognized exam such as TOEFL and IELTS. There's actually a speaking version of TOEIC test. Yes, so TOEIC is really only cared about in Japan and it's passive skills and it's just like an extension of the entrance exam. There's no speaking and there's no output. There's no actual like you know, writing an essay or anything like that. And TOEIC is just kind of an extension of that. It's just like that 
this entrance exam that you have that you can use a score for your business and you know get a promotion or something like that and it's still passive skills now there's an issue if you wanted to make an entrance exam that had output where you had students speaking or writing essays of course that means a lot more work in terms of grading the exam when it's just fill in the bubble a b c d you can run that through a machine and you get the answers right away but if you have to have people reading the essays or people listening to the interviews or whatever it is that you know slows down the process and ends up costing a lot more as well in terms of production of the test materials and paying those people to do those tasks but much fewer people take it compared to South Korea. Most English exams in Japan are only about grammar, reading, or listening. Speaking skills are not even required in school, company, and the society. And even if Japanese people finally speak so, there is a big obstacle for us. Have you ever wondered why my pronunciation is quite bad? That's because we have a strong habit of pronouncing English words with katakana. And I think most people actually know that their pronunciation is far away from native speakers. That can be a big reason why many Japanese are not confident of speaking any English in front of anyone. Yeah, we have to get over the stigma of katakana accent being somehow bad or inferior. Guess what? Everyone in the world speaks English with a completely different accent. I mean, Americans don't sound like British people and don't sound like Kiwis. I mean, as long as you can communicate, we need to get over this idea that there's some kind of standard or perfect English accent that we should strive for, because it's not reasonable to expect that of everyone. And as long as we can communicate, that's the most important thing. So when you have a Japanese business person talking with a Thai business person, and they're using English as the common language, as long as they can communicate, why do they need to sound like they're from America? Katakana English is detrimental to getting a good pronunciation, I guess. <laughs> there are definitely some words that just sound completely different, like baketsu or kohi. For someone who doesn't know Japanese, they think those are completely new words, even though it's, you know, bucket and coffee. My students do that for presentations. If they don't remember how to pronounce in English, they'll use the reading in katakana. And I understand in books and learning material, if you don't have like a CD or an MP3 to go with it, you might not know how to pronounce that word because English has a lot of screwy, like the ninth. People say like ninth, and like no, ninth. And there are so many long English everywhere, which makes it worse. Yeah, I mean, of course, there are going to be words that if you turn them into katakana, they aren't going to work very well for communication either. But that's just another one of those mistakes that, you know, you say it this way once and the person doesn't understand you and you try to figure out what the word pronunciation is that you can both mutually understand. And that's how you move forward in your language. I don't mind that katakana can be used as a learning tool at the beginning. The point is that you also cultivate an awareness that it's not a pronunciation that maybe everyone will be able to understand, like the example baketsu. And hopefully it will work out in the end through the communication process. In Japan, English is cool. You see that not only on people's clothes, but also on signs, places of business, names of places of business, things like that. And, and this isn't everyone, but this feels like a national, kind of a national consensus, is that English is a tool of cool. Uh, it's not a way to communicate with people. Because it is a cool factor for Japan society, bad English becomes addicting. I'm sure you've seen it before. There, there's a, a infamous picture of a sign of a store where it says effing sale. I don't want to actually swear for this video, but it uses the F word in it. And people there had said, well, we just thought that that meant like a really, really good sale for English. And it's like, yeah, maybe use huge or great, but not a huge swear word. Some people in Japan complain about foreigners, especially otaku, weeaboos, everything like that, who use extremely impolite Japanese when they don't mean to. Uh, but the thing is, is that this, it's really not that different. It's still using the wrong thing at, at the wrong Got a picture time, of it. even if the intentions are good. So what? I need to get out of Seiza. My legs are falling asleep. Whoa. Oof, okay, that's a little more comfortable. I'm of two minds about this. I don't mind if students are trying English and get it wrong and 
you know, if ordinary people are getting English incorrect, like saying effing sale and thinking that was all right, I'm, again, I'm not going to, I'll correct them gently, but I'm not going to stigmatize that as something that they did was bad. However, when a large company or firm does it, it's like, you know, when you're putting out official documents and it's this terrible English or this improper English, you know, spend five minutes to run it past a so-called native Czech, right? Okay, then moving on to teachers. So let's see what they say. This is going to be interesting. But teachers, are they actually able to speak English well? In my experience at least, definitely no. All my Japanese English teachers couldn't speak English so well. How would you feel honestly if your music teacher couldn't play any musical instruments? Wouldn't that be weird if your driving instructor couldn't actually drive? But somehow, <laughs> it's totally okay in Japan. English teachers can't speak English well. Many of now, I said this in my previous reaction video. I worked with five different English teachers in my junior high school where I worked, and three of them, their English was just fine. They could speak English pretty well. Two of them were almost impossible to communicate with. So, yeah, those teachers exist. They are actually not qualified yet. And if the teachers are like that, we can't expect the students can speak English well. Now, don't get me wrong. We can't just blame those teachers. All of those teachers are being made to teach English. Actually, they don't really want to teach English. And that's probably not why they signed up to be a teacher. Many of those people, I think, are actually mm. really good teachers and really caring people. But they're just in an environment mm -hmm. where they're doing, they're doing a job that they don't know how to do. It, but it's really unfair to their students. And of course, it's really unfair to the teachers as mm -hmm. well. One of the biggest issues is that teachers do not have enough time or resources. They also have to manage after school activities and they don't have, they cannot focus on solely on their teaching. And this means that teachers do not have the flexibility to participate in professional development and they don't have time to give mutual feedback that is necessary to, to improve their teaching skills. I visit schools um, on a weekly basis and I, I meet all the teachers in school and they always complain about the, they are not given a support to teach proper English. I get to work with a few up and coming teachers, people who are studying education in university and will eventually go on to become teachers in middle schools, high schools, etc. Some of them want to teach music or want to teach math or history and they're really good at the subjects that they're interested in. Those teachers really will be able to teach those subjects probably better than any of the other subjects that they can teach. But sometimes they can't teach the things that, that they're best at. They have to teach English because everybody has to teach English because everybody has to learn English. For those who don't know yet, I really wonder how big of a situation this is. Like how often are teachers coming out of university and being forced into teaching subjects that they're not really well versed in or it's not what they want to teach. Um, it's not really an issue that I'm well aware of in terms of how teachers end up getting assigned their subjects at their schools. I know that teachers end up a lot of times managing sports clubs, after school activities where they've never actually played that sport themselves. They just need, you know, the club needs someone in, on the faculty to manage it. But I didn't realize that this, I guess, is a problem in terms of the subject the teachers actually end up teaching, that they, rather than teach the subject that they want to teach, they end up teaching something completely different. 2020, English class starts from elementary school, not middle school, as it's actually getting worse and worse. And our government really wants to improve our English, but we clearly don't have enough teachers yet. So many unqualified teachers have to teach English to the kids. And even aside from that, does this really work? If English is being taught the exact same way that's being taught at middle and high school. The problems are not going to change. They're only going to develop sooner. For every year that we add to basic English, we take away a year from the students' advanced Japanese. I think that that's a real shame. You can't speak a foreign language better than you can speak your native language. The expectations that we have of these students, that they'll be able to converse fluently 
in English, be able to perform international negotiations and things along those lines, don't really make sense when you think about their levels of Japanese. Yeah, there's this push and pull happening between English education and Kokugo or Japanese education. If you make classes in English in elementary school, that does take time away from other subjects, most notably the learning of Japanese, which is a lot more intensive, I guess labor intensive, you might say, than like learning English in elementary school in the United States because you have a lot of kanji, all of those characters you have to learn and you have to keep up with that. It's a totally different animal learning Japanese in elementary school as compared to learning English in America. By the way, I actually see quite many foreigners quitting the job. So when it comes to the treatment of the teachers, do you think we should improve that more? Yes, English teachers absolutely need to have better treatment. There always seems to be a loss of employment only after a very short period of time. I understand why Japanese teachers jump around schools after a few years. I've been told it's because it's to keep uh, seniority down. No teacher has more seniority over the other. In that Japanese context, I 100% uh, understand, but a foreigner's job depends on their ability to stay in the country. So this is a nightmare scenario where after two years, you don't know if you're going to have a work visa anymore. It's really difficult to have to uproot every couple of years and move to a completely different part of Japan in order just to stay in Japan. Not only do you have to uproot, but your salary gets reset. Over a certain period of time, your salary as an English teacher will go up and up and up. But as soon as those couple years are done, it's back to entry level. So you're losing money. Yeah, as I mean, and that doesn't change at the university level either if you're getting into contract positions. There is a musical chairs aspect of university positions as well. Person in University A goes to B and that person goes to A and they, they're just kind of switching places. And yeah, you're always starting at that bottom level and you don't have any upward mobility in your career. Yeah, and when your visa depends on it, that's certainly a real issue. And I feel like it's not giving the students the best education that they can possibly have. There were a lot of teachers who came in and were just kind of figuring out the job and had finally gotten sort of their feet under them and were able to do their job well. And suddenly they have to move on and be out of there. And that's a disservice to the kids. It's a disservice to the students who could, you know, benefit from having a teacher who has had continuity in that job and knows what they're doing and can really help them to learn. Well, so how did you develop your English, I mean, speaking skills, even though you are on Japan's English education, which is quite bad? That was because of professional wrestling. I was watching WWE, WWF. Yeah, I really, yeah, got glued to the superstars and entertainment there. It was so different from Japanese wrestling. But later on, I found out you shouldn't really learn English from <laughs> wrestling because the language they use, like, you suck or like, fuck you, that kind of thing. Yeah, and you shouldn't <laughs> learn Japanese from anime <laughs> either because, again, that's friend. not we really like, helped me for Japanese, and Japanese yeah. people because use with each other on a daily basis. Like, ironies, I found the want. Like, I wanted to speak English because of professional wrestling. Actually, that got me thinking. Do we really need to improve English in the first place? Maybe it's not so necessary for Japan? We just couldn't find the reason why we're studying English. But I think now it's changing. It's, the world is becoming more and more international. So eventually, our next generation, next, next generation, we will get better eventually because we have to. Yeah, I think it's a matter of time because Japan is an isolated island. We focus more on inviting foreigners, not like going to different countries. It's more about like, bringing tourists into Japan. We didn't have to speak English since Japan has been quite successful in terms of economics and business. And But the time has changed because of the, of the coronavirus, COVID-19. These days, COVID-19 information is very important. Very important information comes in English. Today's world, the information is published, first published in English. And Japanese people have to wait for this information to be, to be translated, which means we fall behind. So yes, um, Reading and writing is very important, uh, but being able to speak English allows you to connect and discuss and with people from diverse backgrounds. So I think it's quite beneficial to be able to speak English. Yeah, I'm not actually sure which way the trend is going. I'm not up on whether English ability is becoming more useful or not in Japan. I know that Japan has become more insular in many ways in the 
sense that less and less students are going abroad compared to years past. But at the same time, I have seen the overall quality of student entering universities go up in terms of their English ability and desire to learn English. When I first started at the university where I work in 2009, the level of student was far lower than it is now. So I have seen a vast improvement over the past 10 plus years. It seems to me that the interest and the access, especially because students don't, you know, university students today don't watch TV like the generation before them. Everyone is watching everything online. So it's YouTube, it's Netflix, um, etc. And I think because of that, you're finding more young Japanese are discovering foreign media and trying to sort of consume that media in English rather than um, just consuming only Japanese media on TV. The Twitch live streamer um, that he's interviewing here is talking about, you know, she got into English through professional wrestling. And a lot of times that's really, you need that kind of outside motivation. Like I'm really into X, Y, Z, and that's in English. So I'm going to learn English. So I understand it better. It's like people in America, you know, learning Japanese because they love anime so much, right? That's kind of the same idea. You, you have that interest and that spurs you on to learn the language international negotiations with foreign companies, you know, these kind of things. How many people need to do that? It's definitely not all people that need to do international negotiation. And it's not all people who will need to be interpreters or translators for foreign tourists, etc. The most fundamentally flawed thing about this system is the idea that everybody should go through it in the same way. Let's say just 1% of Japanese people were really interested in speaking English. If we provided great resources and great teachers to that 1%, that's an enormous number of people who are, have access to great teachers and great resources. And a this lot guy of is way too sensible. That would actually be far more beneficial. I feel like learning a foreign language is important. I think learning a foreign language is using your brain in a different way than if you're learning math or science or your native language, make that an option. Like you can learn English or you can learn French or you can learn Chinese or you can learn Korean, Spanish, you know, whatever. Uh, like in America, we usually have a choice. Like in my high school, we had to learn a foreign language. And then in university, we had to either continue that or learn a new foreign language to be able to graduate. But we had a choice. And in Japan, there's no choice. It's like you learn English as the foreign language. So I think there's a benefit of maybe keeping foreign language as a required subject, but does everyone need to learn English? I think that's a point worth considering. If it's difficult for foreigners to come to Japan and learn Japanese, how much more difficult would it be to teach 127 million Japanese people a foreign language? These are people in their native country who don't necessarily have any expectation of ever living or working abroad. That many resources into improving the English level of somebody who's never going to leave Japan and who doesn't want to talk to foreigners what is the benefit? It would be more beneficial apply good Japanese teachers to foreign care workers than good English teachers to all Japanese people. Imagine trying to teach an entire country a foreign language. That's essentially what the, the Japanese government is going for in Japan right now with, uh, with the idea of universal bilingualism. Obviously, that's impossible. I, I agree and disagree. I mean, I agree that there's definitely a merit to like putting your best resources towards helping foreigners in Japan learn Japanese and helping the Japanese who want to learn English learn English. But at the same time, why not do that for every subject? You know, why does someone need to learn biology if they're not going to become a biologist? Like there's, there's merits to learning things like a foreign language, even if you end up never having to use it. Now, maybe, like I said, it should be learning a foreign language and not necessarily English, 
but I don't think it's a good idea to suggest that, well, you know, maybe we just don't need to learn English or learn a foreign language uh, un uniformly as a country. I, I don't think I could get on board with that because I feel like foreign language study is an important thing and, you know, a lot of people don't know if they're going to have an interest in learning English or going abroad or speaking with foreigners until they've been exposed to it. So I don't think it's a good idea to just eliminate that because, well, they, a lot of people aren't actually going to need it. But a lot of people aren't going to know whether they want to be involved with that or not unless they're exposed to it. And I definitely believe that being exposed to foreign language education is a good spot for personal growth and learning and I would be very much against just eliminating that. I want to thank you very very much for watching this video. It's a little bit long, the original video was 20 minutes so if you've made it all the way to this point thank you so so very much for watching. Remember to hit that like button if that's your thing, subscribe if you haven't already, I put out a new video about Japan, lifestyle, society, and culture every single Friday. I've been in Japan for over 15 years, so I'm hoping I have a few insights that I can share that you might enjoy watching. Thank you so much for watching this one, and I'll catch you next week. Peace.